there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast up fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. You may bring your fruit your offering at this time. Amen. I announce as follows. Today is the birthday celebration for our Bishop Anderson. Tuesday is noonday prayer. Fourth Sunday is youth service. First Sunday is communion. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask our Bishop to come forward as we sing happy birthday to him, whose birthday was on Thursday. Elder Robertson. Bed ready. He kept me. He took us off our beds when we were not feeling well. 
Hallelujah. And I thank God because he just covering us with his blood when it comes to the uh, pandemics and, and these stray bullets and everything. But you know, they shoot anytime. Hallelujah. How God protects as we drive along. Well, some people look like they're going to run right into you. And then God looks like wake them up or whatever they're doing. But it could be they're texting and, and everything while they're driving. Praise God. But God protects us and we thank God so much for it. There's a lot to thank God for. When I looked uh, and saw those commercials again for uh, St. Jude and... Uh, and this other hospital, I can't think of the name of it now, and uh, how those people, those little kids, some kids there with no legs, some with one leg, some with no arm, and I saw one where the hand came almost out of the shoulder, and, and, and just as happy as they can be. And here we have everything, and we walking around with a sad face. You don't know what it is to be saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. They have a right to be, but they are not. So what about us with salvation in our bodies? Yeah. We should be lifted up no matter what comes our way. Yeah. Hallelujah. I used to tell the girls on the job, don't let them see you crying. If you got to cry, go in the bathroom, in your room or whatever, cry, wash your face and wipe it and come on out. Smiling like nothing happened. But they want to see you cry. It, it'll kill them when they see that you're not crying. Hallelujah. So she started doing that, and, and I tell you, that was uh, one of the black teachers, and it looked like to me they had it out for her. And, 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 and then they wrote her up, and then decided that they were going to dismiss her, all these kinds of things when they harass you. And uh, the girl filed a lawsuit against the city against the school, against the principals and all. And uh, some lawyers didn't want to take it and all that kind of stuff, but she stayed with it. And my friend that died uh, last year, she told her that they ended up having to give her millions and millions and millions of dollars. So she asked her, I said, well, oh, I guess you'll start working at Oh, no. I'm going to still work till I decide to retire. They don't decide when I retire. I'm going to work with them until I decide. She said, well, they won't be coming after me anymore. And I tell you, God was with them. Hallelujah. Don't have to work another lick as long as she lives if she didn't want to. Hallelujah. So sometimes it seems like the worst thing in the world, but you wait till God finish. And you'll realize that's the best thing that was ever done for you. Praise God. I just thank God. God is just a wonderful God. And I tell him every day how much I love him. Want to do for him. Want to see his face in peace. Want to be able to reign with him forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. After we've been on this dirty earth, going through these trials and tribulations, we should be working to get so when he cracked the skies, we'll be able to move on up. Hallelujah! Yeah, never to be on this dirty earth again. Hallelujah! <clears throat> Not to be in hell burning and never consumed, eaten by worms and never eaten up, but to be in heaven with Jesus. <clears throat> That's what we should be working for. You don't know where death is. You don't know where sickness is where you can't even remember who you are. And that's a, that's a bad way to be if you're not saved yet. Amen. Because then you can't get saved in that state. Because your mind is not on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for how he is showing us what to do, how to do. <clears throat> get on out here for this Wednesday night Bible study. We, we all hold you out a pastor time. Get out here on Tuesdays when it's not prayer week for our uh, hour of prayer. Praise God. And we know those of you who are working can't, and we can't take care of you. So you have to be at your job. But uh, there are others, if they, ha they can, come on out. You have a day off, get out of the bed, time enough to come for prayer, come to prayer, and go back and get in your bed if you want. 
for God will honor us. The more we sacrifice, hallelujah, and I thank God. He's just a wonderful God. We're so thankful for today, for everyone who pressed their way out, for all the uh, beautiful songs and all uh, our testimonies and everything uh, uh, that we are doing today. Bishop's birthday was on the 15th, and so we're celebrating it here today. Uh, I think I was surprised when, when he answered the phone, and I started singing happy birthday to you. And I stopped right there. I did that with somebody one time. They said, what the happened? You didn't remember the rest of the song? <laughs> I told them, no, that's all I had planned to say. Say, praise God. But we are so thankful today. But we could have been in mourning. But God said no. So it's a great thing. If you think you don't have anything to be thankful for, then thank them for um, Bishop and Mother Anderson. Amen. Hallelujah. And what he did for them. Yeah. And what he's still doing for them. Yeah. 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 Put them up in one of the best hotels. All right. yeah. Now put them in another house. All right. yeah. And that could be six months or whatever before they yeah. fix the other house. Put them in another house, in there, and brought furniture. And, and went in and took the furniture in and put it wherever you wanted it to be. And, and I think Mother said they even, they even made up the bed. <laughs> put the sheets and the pillowcases and the uh, comforters or the bed or whatever. Put all of that on the bed. They didn't have to do anything. Well, they said what they wanted to do. I tell you, you can't be God here. Hallelujah. You think it's so bleak? God will show it's not as bleak as you think it is. And so he'll let us know, I got this. And once God has it, nobody can outdo it. And I thank God. And then when you see the house when they finish, uh, this and then we say, oh, well, thank God. Because they're going to look like a new house. Yeah. And then they got to go out and pick up new furniture. Yeah. And gradually, new clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, I can't tell you the exact story, but God has already blessed Bishop with new clothes. And he wasn't the one that was uh, distressed with losing all his stuff. <laughs> and I came to you, I said, y'all save me a coat? And y'all save me this? And come to find out all of those things, 15 bags of clothes that that man brought here. Yeah, all for men. Yeah. <laughs> I was too cool. Uh, all for the men. But I was so happy that the men, they had the sizes. Yes. That uh, our men could wear, praise God. Some of them, we still have some downstairs now that uh, uh, some couldn't wear. And uh, so, oh, oh, I don't know what they have downstairs. So I forgot y'all gave them out yesterday. They gave them out yesterday. But we thank God. God is just, I mean, He's yes. just blessing. Yes. He is really just blessing, praise God. And, 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 and mother would tell me about even down to the dishes they brought in. Silverware, everything. Hallelujah. They didn't have to order it. The people got to figure out what you need in a house, put it on the truck, and brought it out. I thank God. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I used to tell the people when they were losing their jobs, I said, don't worry about it. I said, oh, God can give you something better. Yes. And somebody came back and told me, said, you were right. I said, oh, the job I have now, much better and paying more money. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. God is just wonderful. Yes. Now, we're getting ready for the word of God. Now, since we're going out this afternoon, I asked Sister uh, Campbell not to bring our dessert. So next Sunday, we're going to have, oh, you won't be here next Sunday with your Sister Tell. Yeah. You won't be here next Sunday, you will? Uh, well, 
Well, how about y'all feel like you're going to take out next Sunday? Because uh, she's going to bring the dessert that they have, it, uh, some dessert for us to uh, be able to take out as well. So those of you who can cook, uh, cook something and bring it so we can put it in our takeout, that will still be a part of Bishop Anderson's uh, celebration. Uh -huh. We'll stop there. Mr. Anderson will celebrate his the whole month and the next month and all that. <laughs> Praise God. But I thank God. Now we're getting ready for the Word of God. We want you to sit attentively. Remember, this is Bishop Day. We ain't in no hurry. I know Bishop ain't in no hurry to go home. Uh, we might be in a hurry with an elder for eating. <laughs> but, uh, We'll wait. We thank God. God is just so wonderful. We're getting ready for the Word of God and uh, uh, that uh, Evangelist Odom has for us today. Uh, we want to accept God's Word and whatever's for you, you take it for you, for me, take it for me. If it's energizing, we are lifted up. And if it's not, it's with us and we just say, thank you, Lord. And go and get straight what needs to be straight. Uh huh. Don't get mad at the, at the messenger. The messenger only bringing what God wants the messenger to bring. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to bring before you at this time Evangelist Odin. Amen. Anointed fall on me. shall rejoice and be glad in it, O oh God. Yeah. O oh God, we ask you to take out self and move self out the way, O oh God. Yeah. And you speak, O oh God, move by your spirit and your power, O oh God. Yeah. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the occasion, God. We thank you yeah. that you let Bishop see another year, O oh God. Yeah. O oh God, how you study blessing him in his old age, O oh God. Yeah. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise because nobody did it but you, God. So God, we may your name right now, oh God. And we bless you and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 And I thank and praise God for this service today. Amen. Thank and praise God because my word is, the word is lined up today. God. I'll be reading from Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Hallelujah. God said in all things, give him praise and thanks. And I thank and praise God for Bishop and Mother Testimony. Nobody did it but God. And it can relate to Psalms 34. God came to their rescue. He said he won't withhold no good thing from them that walk upright before him. And so we give God the praise and the glory and the honor. And I like this song because every time David get in trouble, he cried out to the Lord and he 
delivers him out of all his troubles. So we thank and praise God for the song. We thank and praise God everybody was saying stuff lined up with the word. I said, thank you, Jesus, this is the word. Yeah. And it came straight from heaven. Well, you have to say amen. amen. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mind, my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man, book about Bishop, cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around them, around about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. They blessed. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I only read verses 1 to 9, and when you get home, you can read it. The rest of it. But this is a good song because um, this song uh, it expressed the goodness of God. And it lets us know that the goodness of God is greater than the fear of man. David, when he, he changed his behavior before Abilene so that he drove him out and he went away. And I'm going to tell you the story. Like many of the Psalms, Psalm 34 shows us the grace of God given to sinful humanity. Uh, through this psalm, we will see the result of a repentant heart that has received forgiveness. That's why God tells us to repent. And that's why he said if we come boldly to the throne of grace and repent, then he's just and faithful enough to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then, not only that, but he restores our soul. He restores everything that the devil took from you when you repent. And so we thank God for that. We see here that David responds to forgiveness in two ways. First, we're invited to rejoice in the Lord with him. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times, good times, bad times. When I'm rich, when I'm poor, when I'm sad, and when I'm happy. At all times, bless the Lord. No matter what's going on, bless the Lord. So David, his first, we're invited to rejoice in the Lord with him. Second, we're instructed to learn from his mistakes. And I love David because if you read through the Psalms, he went through some, David had, was troubled. He did a lot of stuff. But I like his heart because David had a repentant heart. And every time he repented, God forgave him. See, David didn't make an excuse for nobody did this and that and that. But he, he searched his own self. Amen. He said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. And then, then only will I be able to witness to somebody, okay, and tell them something. But you got to clean my heart first. Amen. And so he always acknowledged his sins. He didn't make an excuse and blame on nobody, but he, he checked himself. And that's what we have to do, search our heart. The historical content of Psalm 34 leads us to 1 Samuel 21, 10 and 15. For the biblical content, David has been anointed the future king of Israel. Saul, the current king, is not a fan of David's. On multiple occasions, Saul, Saul tries either to, to have David kill or kill David himself. But we know that any weapon that's formed against us shall not prosper. Amen. So that happened in the Bible and it's happening today, right? Yeah. David, in fear of Saul, flees to God in the country of the Philistines. 
And the servants of the king God recognized David and the songs they, they used to sing about him. They say Saul has killed uh, his thousands, and David has killed ten thousands in 1 Samuel 21 and 11. Then David, in fear of Achaius, king of God, pretends to be insane before Abilich, who drove him away, and he departed. David was always on the run. He, he was always on the run, running from something running from somebody. Now the first of the two sections of Psalm 34 deal with worshiping God. Immediately in verse one through three, before he gives any reason, David declares that God is worthy of worship. Yes. That's why he said, enter into my gates with yes. thanksgiving and praise. Yes. You know, when we worship, things start to happen. Yes. He said, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Yes. So when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise in our heart, no matter what we're going through, when we leave out, the blessing is, is already taken care of. It's already done. And I'm so happy because, you know, I look back and I thought about Bishop and Mother. God is a good God. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Because they could have went to bed and went to sleep. And you know when you wake up with a fire, you incoherent, you can't see straight, you can't think. You're going back, but they tell you to run this way, you're running the other way toward the fire. Yeah. So God is a good God because yeah. he, he does things well. Yeah. He let, and God had a purpose behind it, Bishop. Yeah. He had a purpose. He tried to tell you something, that I'm with you. I'm with you. You can lose everything. But you, you still got your soul. You still have salvation. Okay? I said, Lord, I thank you. He let it happen in the daytime. So they didn't have to scurry around at night for nothing. He did everything before midnight. That means something. God is with you. He said, the angels of the Lord are your sire and camp around you. And the angels of the Lord was encamping around them. And God is a good God because he prepared everything right before them. I thank God. God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. So David declares that God is worthy to worship. David uses three personal verbs. I will bless the Lord at all times. The second one is, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. And the third one is, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Yeah. God wants us to boast about him. When he do something, yeah. he said, keep your testimony. Yeah. He wants you to tell everybody, God did it. Yeah. I didn't have anything to do with it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Yeah. To let them know that, look, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Because yeah. you don't have no respect to person. And I thank God that he doesn't have respect for people. Amen. God is a good God. Yeah. The implication is that worship is both personal and corporate. Amen. We have to worship him personal when we're at home, every day of our life, when we go to job, work, school, wherever we go. We have to worship God. Yeah. Give him the glory and the praise. We don't have to walk around sad and depressed and worried about our bills and worried about this. Worrying how this is going to be done. Worrying about what I'm going to cook tonight. Worrying about something happened three weeks ago. Can't, you, it's beyond your control. You can't even fix it. Amen. But all we have to do is worship God. Amen. And you know what? When you buy yourself and you think of the things, and then God will put a song of praise in your, in your mouth. Amen. He'll put a praise in your mouth because he wants you to worship him at all times. I woke up last week, I was waking up in the morning, and I said, Lord, well, where did I get this on? I woke up singing, um, uh, Jesus blesses me every day. I get a blessing from the Lord. You know that song? Every day of my life, I get a blessing. Every day of my life, I get a blessing from the Lord. Every day of my life, I get a blessing. A blessing, blessing from the Lord. And you know, and I got up and I jumped up and I said, Lord, you're right. Every day of my life, I get a blessing. Yeah. 
doesn't have to be financial, but if I'm able to step out my bed and put my feet on the floor, that's a blessing. If I'm able to take a shower, wash up myself, that's a blessing. If I'm able to cook my own food, that's a blessing. If my mind is still intact, that's a blessing. So every day of my life, I get a blessing. And that's what David's is, is Psalms is about. Praise God every day for everything. I had five major operations and doctor said I wouldn't be here. That's a blessing. That's why I bless the Lord at all times. My daughter had lupus, went undergoing chemotherapy up until this day. They said she would live past 14. They said she would never have children. That's a blessing. I bless the Lord because she had not only one child but two. And she's 34 years old. That's a blessing. Nobody but God. The type of lupus she had, all her friends around her died. She's still here. Nobody but God. I bless the Lord. I give him the glory. Because, and so when I come in here and, and sing it, I'm not trying to out sing nobody. I'm singing from my heart, God, and your soul. God wants you to sing from the depths of your heart. When you enter into the gates, God, you see. We want the Spirit of God to be in here. Leave all the foolishness at the door. Amen. And come in here, praise God, like it's your last time. Amen. He said, bless the Lord at all times. Amen. So when you walk into the door, start blessing him. Bye, bye, bye. At the door. Start blessing him. And come in here and praise God and, and watch what he do. We were outside yesterday giving out the clothes. And it looked like nothing was happening. All the clothes was just Howling up on the table. I said, Lord, it's hot out here. I said, Sister Dion, come here. I said, and Joe was right there. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we don't want to take these clothes back in the house, in, the, in your house. Lord, send the people. No, not less than 10 minutes, a flood of people came <laughs> and got the clothes. And, and we fixed up the table. The table looked kind of empty. And we said, okay. Next minute, another flood of people came and got the love. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. So when we bless the Lord, we can expect to get an answer from him. He said, "My, if you cry out to me, I will answer. I will answer because his ears are attentive to the righteous. He just waiting for us to call him. Or you, but you have to have walk upright. You have to fear him. Amen. Be humble and walk upright before him. Amen. I thank and praise God for that. It says in verses that I speak, the, implica the implication is that worship is both personal and corporate. In verse 4 and 6, David sought the Lord. It says sought and it means cry out. That's why God says, seek my face when you pray. He sought the Lord and cried to the Lord. Yeah. In verse 5 and 7, God not only answered and delivered him from his fears, yeah. the feeling of being afraid and troubled, the physical things that David was afraid of, the Lord heard him yeah. and he delivered him. Yeah. He gives him the blessings of his presence. Because he told them the angels of the Lord encamp around you. Yes. And sometimes God would say, fear not, for I am with you. Yes. We all are assigned an angel. Yes. And your angel encamps around you yes. every day, every morning. So you have no fear. The devil tried to put fear in our heart that, oh, they beating up all the seniors and you by yourself. And, and you might have to cut somebody. <laughs> so you shouldn't go outside. <laughs> I said the devil was a lie. Cut nobody. I'm too old to go to jail. <laughs> and I said, Lord, your angel is with me. So, Lord, go out here with me. And I always pray before I go. And God gives me peace where I go. He makes everything so small. Everywhere. It looks like every doctor's appointment or, or social uh, security or whatever. It's only two people or one person ahead of me. I said, look at God. God clears the path for you. If you bless his name. If you bless his name, he'll do that. It says, radiant, radiant 
and never be ashamed, verse 5, and reference to the blessings of the Garden of Eden. The implication is that God hears us and delivers us. Verse 5 says, They looked unto him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. God hears us. He'll never make you ashamed if you trust in him. Amen. Verse 8 through 10 are the turning point of this song. David concludes his initial invitation to worship the Lord with a similar invitation to join him in experiencing God's goodness. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. But you have to put your trust in him yeah. to see. That's what he means. You got to put your trust in all your faith. All, with all your might and with all your heart. You got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. With every situation. No matter what the doctor say. You got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. David then turns our attention to his instructions on how we can share in God's goodness. Yeah. By found, finding our refuge in him. Verse 34 and 9, there is no want to them that fear him. Note that the promises is reserved only for those who genuinely fear the Lord. That's why Proverbs 9 and 10 lets us know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy, then the knowledge of the holy is understanding. We have to fear God. Once we fear him, there's no want to us to fear him, that walk up right before him. Some people stop fearing God and they do everything and, and wonder why nothing is happening because the fear is gone. Yeah. And God said, without me, you can do nothing. See, I'm the head. He said, I'm the beginning and the end. So without me, you can't do nothing. You have to, we have to self humble ourselves back to the Lord. God promises us to Number one, he promises to deliver us from fear yeah. in verse four. He promised to save us from all our trouble, not some of it, but all of it. Amen. That's why he said, cast your cares upon me, but I care it for you. Amen. He promised to send angels to encamp around us. Amen. And he told them, the angels of the Lord encamp around them yeah. that fear him, yeah. okay? He promised to supply our needs in verse 9. Amen. He said, he supplied all our needs according Amen. to his riches and glory. Amen. Okay, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Amen. Because God supplies all our needs. Amen. He promised to give us abundant life. Amen. Abundant. Amen. And that means abundant. Amen. Whatever you want, you can have it. Because Mark eleven twenty two. And uh, 11, 22 to 24 tells us whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it and you shall receive it, right? Yeah. That's abundant. Yeah. And then he said he would not withhold any good thing from men to walk up right before him. Yeah. If you have the fear of the Lord and do what God tells you to do, being humble, keeping his commandments, his laws and statutes, loving one another, forgiving one another, God said, ask for what you want. Ask for what you want. Amen. Whatever you want, ask for it. Because yeah. his ears are open to the righteous. Yes. He said, he hear our prayers in verse 15. He hears all of our prayers. Somebody said, oh, God, don't answer. Yes, he does. He answers every one of our prayers. Might not be the way you want it to be, but he answers every prayer. Amen. He answers every prayer. We have to take on the role of a servant. Jesus came down here. He took on that role of a servant. That's our first title, servant. Okay? Our first title is servant. We might have other titles, but our own title is servant. Yeah. To do what he wants us to do. He hears our prayers, verse 15. He comforted us with his presence, verse 8. And redeemed our soul, verse 22. But only if we seek the Lord, we, in verse 4 and 10, we can cry out to him in verse 6. We can draw close to him and fear him, verse 7 and 9. Keep our tongues from the evil of lying, verse 13. And that's very important. 
because a liar will not tarry in his son. God hates a liar. It's so easy to tell the truth whether you're going to be punished for it or not. And if you tell the truth, you don't know, he might even, you know, have mercy and you won't be punished that bad, <laughs> okay? But if you lie and the truth come out, you're going to be double, double punished. So he hates a liar. And we have to remain separated from the evil of this world. He told us to come out from amongst them and be ye separated, say the Lord. How can two agree, walk and agree? Except we agree. We can't. Right. What does a darkness have to do with light? Not, we don't have nothing in common. Right. Not a thing. Right. And if God wants you to minister to somebody that's unsaved, he'll make a way. You don't have to go to their party and all of this nonsense. No, he said, come out from among them and be yes. separate. He will send them to you. Remain separate from the world. Do good and pursue peace. All that lies within you, he said, follow peace with all men. For holiness, no man shall see God. You got to follow peace with your enemies, everybody, and do whatever is necessary to keep peace. Because God is a peacemaker. He's, a, he's not an author of confusion, but he's peace. And if you in confusion, he ain't, he's not going to hear you. Because that means you regard an iniquity in your heart. And he said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I will not hear you. Okay, so you want God, we want God to hear us at all times. Yeah. He said, have a contrite heart, verse 18, and become his servants, verse 22. Some people say, and this was argued in the Bible school. Some were saying, oh, your first role is a missionary. No, it's not. Your first word, your first role when you get saved is a servant. Yeah. Because you have to be humble and you got to wait on the Lord for your call. Yeah. And he'll let you know what you, he, he'll instruct you or what he wants you to do. Uh -huh. So we are all servants. In spite of the title, you're still serving. Yeah. It said Jesus came down here and humbled himself yeah. and became a servant. He didn't, he didn't say, they say Messiah and all of that. No. He became a servant. Yeah. And that's our role. When we get served, we, we become a servant first before anything. Yeah. And then God chooses what he wants us to be. Yeah. Not man. So I thank God for that. The writer of this song praises the Lord for a miraculous deliverance from great trouble. His testimony encourages all afflicted believers to believe that they may also experience the goodness of the Lord. He said, the angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and yeah. delivereth them. Probably refers to the angelic host of heavenly. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Yeah. According to Hebrews 1 and 14, Genesis 32, 1 and 2. God has appointed his angels to protect and rescue his saints from physical and spiritual harm. This promise of, the, of divine intervention is reserved only for those who truly fear the Lord. So saints, we ask you today, stop fearing anybody looking at you when you enter into his house. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in your mouth. Bless the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Yeah. Know that he is God. And he alone is the only one who deserve all the work, all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody else deserves it. Nobody. So when you enter into his gates, enter in with thanksgiving and praise. Act like this is your last time here. Because the way the world is going, they're doing so much stuff. When we make it here and get here, we're so glad that we, we woke up another day and they didn't uh, lodge an attack on us. We're so glad that, you know, that we don't know what they're spraying in the atmosphere at night. Everybody that have asthma waking up in the morning coughing and can't hardly breathe. When we enter in God's gates, we better give him all the glory and praise. 
and try to make every prayer service. You know why? He said, my people, which are called by my name, if they humble it themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek his face, we can hear from heaven. And he'll heal the land. The land is not healed because we pray it, but we haven't turned from our wicked ways. Yes. So, saints, let's turn from our wicked ways and let's bless the Lord at all times. No matter what's going on in our life, start blessing the Lord and see how he turned it around. Amen. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. We thank God for letting our bishop see another year, another birthday. And he has his health and he has his strength. And we thank God for, for that on today. We want to present to you, Bishop Anderson, this token of our love from the Pentecostal Rescue House of Prayer. That God may God continue to bless you in health and strength as you continue to uh, feed us the word of God. Amen. Say some words. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Just want to thank each and every one for what you've done and what you're doing. I thank God for just touching your heart and opening your heart to walk God. I thank God for this birthday. Amen. Amen. This isn't the last one. I'm going to see many more birthdays. Amen. I'm not leaving you yet. I'm going to be around. And I thank God. I thank God for 88 years. And you know, when I, when I was a, a, a young boy, and I heard people were 50 years old, I thought it was old for me. <laughs> now, they're not old at all. Even 80 years old. And now, look what Moses did at 80 years old. That's right. And he didn't say I had to die because I'm in my 80s or 90s. Uh -huh. But I believe it's 100 and uh, what? 120. Fine. So look at count the years. I thank God. God is a wonder. And I thank God not only just for the birthday, but I thank God for health and strength. I thank God for being able to move around to do what I have to do. And I thank God most of all for being saved, for being sanctified. I thank God for the Holy Ghost of Friday in my sanctified soul. I, I, my mind is made up. I'm going back with the Lord from here. Oh, I'm not going to be left here. Amen. Nothing here that would entice me to give up God. Amen. It's not worth it. Nothing on earth is worth me giving up what God has prepared for me to be here before the end. 
Amen. I'm looking to live forever and ever. Amen. And ever and ever. Amen. Amen. God is that kind of love. Yes. And I yes. thank God so much for you all. Amen. Knowing that I got sisters and brothers. Amen. Knowing that you are praying for us. Amen. You're keeping us before the Lord. Amen. As your sister said, if it had happened at night, I don't know what could have happened. You could have gone into judgment. Right. But since it was you during the day, God still preserves us. Glad about it. God is a wonder. See, God knows about everything. It wasn't no surprise to God that, that the house caught on fire. It wasn't no surprise to God. Nothing that happened in our life. And I'm not caught up in houses. I'm not caught up in clothes. I'm not caught up in nothing but Jesus. That's the only thing that matters. I can get another house. I can get another soul. Yeah. I can't get another soul. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everything else, you can get it. You can go out and buy this and that. No more life you can buy. Yeah. So we might as well serve God while we have a life to serve Him. Love Him and trust Him. Because yeah. He'll never fail us. Yeah. He'll be right there. He promised to be on our side. Yes. He said, goodness and mercy yes. shall follow you all the days of my life. Yes. But what I got to do? What I got to worry about? When you're serving God, you don't have anything to worry about. You don't have to stay there and turn and twist it about bills or nothing else. God knows about these things. And he knows how to carry us. Yes, Thank God for everyone. Thank God. Even for my, my, my great grands, they called me on the floor and wishing me happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God.